Hello everyone, welcome to lesson number five in our Statistics Made Easy series. Today we're going to be looking at analysis of variance. Today being April 29, 2020, I'm Peter Okibukola. So what did we do in lesson four? In lesson four, we learned a few things about t-test. It's bit free history, mathematical model, and all of this. Today, in this lesson, we will learn the following about analysis of variance, the one-way model, the one-way approach. We're going to look at this brief history, mathematical model, when and how to use it, and how to report the findings. Hmm. So which acronym is correct? Analysis of variance. Analysis of variance. ANOVA has all caps, capital letters, or ANOVA, with this one being a cap, or everything in lowercase, by the way. All are correct. Just use them as the spirit moves you so to do. But usually, when it's in the sentence, in the in a thesis or project report or in an article, this is this is good enough. But when it's starting a sentence, this is this is this is quite okay. Oh, Mr. Variance, a nice of variance. Can't you leave us alone? It's like a shadow following us. But I warned you that mean star division and variance. We follow us all the way through because it serves as a bridge between here the discrete statistics and the pressure statistics. Let me give you a brief history of the invention of ANOVA. You note know that in lesson number four, we talked about the invention of the T test by William Seeley Gossett that went under the pseudonym, the uh, pseudonym Stoddard. So researchers were quite happy with this because they use it to tell the difference between two groups. But over time, when they had more than two groups, like six groups or seven groups, it means they're going to have multiple t-tests. They are no choice other than to do that. But this brought potential errors to the calculation, maybe type one error. So they had very frustrating time over a 10-year period. But by 1918, Sir Ronald Elmer Fisher, a British statistician and geneticist, came up with a technique called analysis of variance. Uh, it appeared in his uh, paper, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And, uh, okay, let me just show you that. You can read through this. At your comment. So this is the paper that Fisher, the raw paper that Fisher you know, released to invent the analysis of variance. Who is this Fisher of a man? Great man. Great man indeed. Uh, he was born in 17th of February 19, 19, 18, 1890. That's why I really like the man, because we share the same birthday 17th february the greatest day of the year did i you say that's not correct i'm telling you that's correct because fisher was born that day and i was born that day oh that's my wealthy joke uh he lived for 72 years that's why i'm going to be different from him by the special grace of god i'm going to double that 144 years hmm. <laughs> now he is rated as the most the single most important figure in 20th century statistics you're asking me a question. Okay, uh, go ahead with your question, class. Which variances are we analyzing? Uh, when well, we talk about analysis of variance, so which variances are we analyzing? The answer is really very simple, and it's based on the logic of ANOVA. So what's the logic of ANOVA? You see, we are looking at, we said, two or more uh, groups. So these are three groups that you have in this class, for instance, STEM education group, ICT education group, social sciences, and humanities group. Now, we ask you a question about COVID-19 and dropout rates, and maybe these are your scores. You know, we add as that you should uh, indicate your perception from strongly agree, agree, disagree to strongly disagree, and we we'll call it uh, one, two, three, four. So th these are the scores. So look at the variances here. The variance, you know, how, how these scores are varying from the middle, from the the average or the mean will be like three point one something. You can say just very little. This one very little. This one very little. So. Uh, you, when you look at it, you can see that the variances, we are analyzing the variances between these groups and also analyzing the variances among the, I mean, within the groups. Let's check out this other table. You can see that within this group, the variance is also not too much. This not too much. Not, not too much. But you see, between the groups, you can see this is one, one, one. This is three something. This is four, four. So with, with, between the groups, you have quite some variation. 
the variances are here are quite uh, uh, diverse or huge. Are here very very little. Another question, yes, go ahead. Which variances are we analyzing? I've just answered the question. I've answered the question by saying that we're analyzing the variance. You know, this test is analysis of variance. And we're analyzing, I tell you, just two variances. Variances between the groups are variances within the groups. So it's actually a ratio. A ratio, this will have that or something. And the ratio F stands for, we were looking for a word, what do we call this? Oh, yeah, but this man, Fisher invented it. So it's F ratio, Fisher's ratio. So it's the variance between the groups and within the group. So it's like this, variance between groups and variance within groups. So if you have this variance, you have this variance. If you just divide, you get your, your F ratio. Oh, let me scare you a little bit. And that's how I was scared when we were learning an analysis of variance. The professor would come and put all of this formula there that would scare us, uh, scare us no, no, no reason. So, I'm making it a little bit simpler because when you get your analysis of variance result, it's just a simple division and multiplication. This multiplied by this to give, this multiplied by this for this, and this one, divide this by this to give this. Is that easy? Yes, it's that easy. So, the F is this one, mean square, uh, this, and mean square, total, mean square error. So, this is what you get here. Now, let me make it even simpler still. So, F, as I said, is the B square between groups. We're asking me mean square and variance. Well, they, they are connected down the line. Mean square between groups and mean square within groups. So, assume that you get the mean square between the groups to be 20 and the mean square within the groups to be 2. So, it's simple. The F, that's it. An ANOVA, this is actually the ANOVA, the F test, is 20 divided by 2, which gives you 10. So let's go back to uh, that table. Uh, let's just guess, what are the chances of this one having a significant F table 1? I'll leave you to reflect on it and then tell me. Yes, I'm sure you have reflected on it to, to show that between the groups here, between the groups, between the groups, is very small. The, the, the variance is very small between the groups, also within the groups. So we expect that the chances of your getting signal F will be low. In fact, when you conduct your study and you actually look at the data between the groups, you, you can guess that, oh, this the difference likely to have a significant F value. Let's look at the second one, table two. You can see here, ha, difference. The, 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 the variances between the groups is much, also within, lower between the within, more between than within. So you put the between on top, divide by the one be, uh, within, the, the figure is likely to be high. So the chances of this having a significant difference are high. Another question, yes, go ahead. When can you use an over? I thought I had answered that question. But let's now, let, let me still go back to it. Use ANOVA when you are comparing two or more group means. Now, look at what we said, two or more, meaning that you can apply ANOVA. I think it was, uh, the Joe was that in class. You can apply ANOVA to two groups. You can apply ANOVA to three groups, to four groups, to five groups, on and on like that. But if since you have t test, which is easy to deal with, I mean, it's better to do a t test on a two group uh, configuration. Now, let's go back to our example. Let's go back to our questionnaire and see how this whole things, uh, the, the whole, the, uh, all of these things play out. So, this is the questionnaire that we use for collecting data for our course. Where demographic data, so in first and how to find. So, Nigerian, you can see that we have one, two, three, four. So, if we are if we are using nationality as basis for analysis of variance, uh, basis for analysis, that this has to be analysis of variance, because more than two groups. Institution, more than two groups, so that's analysis of variance. Specialization, more than two groups, analysis of variance. Class of degree, two. Which one will we use? Class, yeah, you're right, T-test. Sex, male, female, two tests. Rural, urban, T-test. How will you reach your socioeconomic status? Okay, this high average and low. If you are using socioeconomic status, it has to be uh, ANOVA also. Uh, so let's look at uh, the section B, in which we're asking 
about the effects of COVID-19 on the educational system. And we're asking them to say, okay, uh, uh, students' performance will be negatively affected. Strongly agree, agree, disagree, and strongly disagree. So we score this one, two, three, four. For positive items, it will be four, three, two, one. For negative items, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, four. So, and that's it. Uh, I think uh, let's just pick one as we go along here. Uh, okay, let's pick this. Dropout rates will increase at the end of the year. So we're going to be looking at this as we progress. So, so we are able to see examples in our study of those variables that can uh, come into our analysis of variance. Uh, let's look at examples from uh, your proposed doctoral uh, studies. Henry Corey, uh, you're looking at the impact of e-learning usage on university students' academic achievement and creativity. It's possible that you will be partitioning uh, your subjects into three groups. So F test will come in here. But that is your computer simulation, Cognitive achievement and higher order thinking skills in senior secondary school is possible. That we'll be looking at uh, three or more groups here. So, F test. And Ramadan Yandui, assessment of antimicrobial residues and antibiotic resistant genes in beef and chicken meats served to markets of Burundi. Oh, yeah. So, you can, you may be using three groups here too. And, so, and the rest on this table and others. So, let's bother me. Yes, if you want to bother me with another question. Why is it called one way? Hmm. It's called one way because the number of ways is actually the number of factors to which you are subjecting the ANOVA. Uh, example, example of factors are the ones we saw in the questionnaire. And the factors are like your independent variables. So nationality, uh, sex, SES, specialization, institution, degree, location. These are the ways, the factors. So if we are using only nationality, if we are comparing uh, uh, the, the four groups in nationality, then it will be one way, if it's only nationality. If it's only sex, we can't do that because we're only male and female, except you want to use a test for it. So if economy, status, average, and low, then you have to use, uh, it has to be one way. If it's only one, it's only one, it has to be one way. But if you are taking on nationality, sex, SES, specialization, that's four, it has to be four way. If you are taking all of this, that's be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In that case, we'll be having a seven way ANOVA. Oh, so you don't understand. You understand that? Yes, meaning that if you took only one here, it will be one way. If you have two, it will be two way, and so on. For this lesson, we have only taken one of them, which is specialization. That's why it is one way ANOVA. So what's the procedure for conducting the one way ever? Let's just go on with that. Just like in T-test, we have five simple steps. The first, state your research question. Mm -hmm. Second, state your hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Third, conduct the one way ANOVA. Yes. Fourth, present your ANOVA table. And last, make a decision. So let's see how we compute ANOVA from a study based on the five steps. The first one is, of course, a research question. And so what is that research question? Let's pose this research question as this. Is there statistically significant difference? You can see this word now. I've used among. Note that Professor Tony Lucien also, also mentioned it to us. Among, since we are dealing with more than two. Now we have four of them. STEM education students, ICT education students, social science, humanities students, and pure science students. In their perception of the impact of COVID-19, on dropout rates at the end of the school year. Now you can you, you, you can change this to so is there statistically significant or will there be because still a question question mark is at the, at the end. So well, step number one is done. What about step number two? Step number two is a hypothesis and all you are changing is here. There will be no and it will be H not or H zero with this coming down here as superscript. There will be no. Let's look at the uh, research question. Is there or will there be? So this is what you are changing to. There will be no in your no hypothesis. So everything, every other thing remains. There will be no statistically significant difference among STEM education, ICT education, social, science, social sciences for humanities and pure science students in their perception of the impact of COVID-19 on dropout rates at the end of the school year. How confident are we that that's going to happen? Well, me.
Let me beat my chest again like I did for Tetris. I'm confident that this will be true at point, uh, uh, at point oh five uh, alpha level. Uh, you know, we discuss alpha level in step four. So this is 95% confident that there will not be any difference. Now let's do a practical, uh, uh, let's go on to a practical session on the conduct of uh, ANOVA or F test. Here, we're going to get back to our raw data. See, this is our raw data. That's, uh, name, nationality, institution, method, specialization. Okay, this is the one we'll be using now. And then we are looking at uh, what, what, what? We are looking at uh, B, B8. That's the, that's this one. Now, this B8 is the dropout, the dropout rate score. So how do I know? How do I know? So you could, if you can go to variable view, you'll just find it here. Uh, the institution, the method specialization. So this specialization, you can see what we have here. You can have, but you see them here. And then you go to uh, B8. Yes, B8 is it here, this one. So you can see dropout rates, uh, the dropout rate will, let's see now, will increase at the end of the school year. So that, that's it. So what, what, do, what we now want to do is to just extract the the relevant columns. As you can see here, I've extract, extracted the relevant columns. Uh, you can see a surname, Ademola Deke, Danishimiye, Hilaire, and all of this. And then specialization is here. And then this is uh, the dropout rate score. So this is the same thing that I've transferred to this slide. And so what statistical tool are we going to use? Of course. Uh, the statistical tool of choice in, our, in this course is uh, IBM SPSS statistics. That, how do you get it? As I told you in lesson four, get it from your school or purchase online. And very importantly, ensure that you learn how to calculate or compute or use SPSS for your ANOVA. Do not depend on others to analyze data for you. If you do, you don't know, they will cook your results and mess your, mess your integrity up. And of course, when you are defending your thesis or dissertation, uh, they will not be there. And so because you don't, you, 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 you don't have a feel of how they have analyzed it, then you are going to be in some trouble. So the message is that you should analyze the data yourself. So what are, we begin, what are we waiting for? We already have our data. We have SPSS. Let's begin with the F statistic uh, analysis. Hey, uh, what's happening here again? Well, let's say again, ANOVA. We met the T-test people only, okay, it's different. Uh -huh. So Anova, what are you saying? Uh, you are asking for uh, NHR clearance papers. What are these NHR clearance papers? Now, these are the assumptions that we must meet before we get into the kingdom of Anova. There are three of them, just like we have for the T-test. There are more than, there are about five. But these are the key ones. The population from where we are drawing this uh, sample should be normal. The variance should be homogeneous. The variances that we get for those three groups should be homogeneous. Then random assignment. Let me refer you to lesson four for all of this so as to save some time. Yeah, so how do we now conduct this one way or another on our data? Quite simple, very simple, just like a T test. You just go to analyze, compare means, one way or another. Select uh, the, the necessary uh, uh, the check boxes and then click OK. Action time. So let's go. Let's see how it, how it works in practice. So here we are with our data. And uh, we'll go to, as I said earlier, analyze, compare means. They were comparing the means. And then, want it? No. We did this one. No. We did this one. No. For example, no. You can see it. You can see it here one way and over so you click on one way and over let me reset this so dropout rate is what uh, we want to check out that's our dependent list dropout rate our specialization that's uh, the different uh, specializations that we mentioned would be a factor let's look at contrast uh no this is fine postdoc we'll be looking at postdoc later uh, that's for another uh, another exercise uh, so we're going to cancel this let's look at options here yeah we can have descriptives uh 
we can have the Brown Forsyth test and Welch test. I'm going to mention them to you in a minute. Opportunity of variance, we're going to have it. And uh, what else? Yeah, that's it. So we'll continue. And then we we'll say, okay. Oh, wonderful. Uh, one way or another has been, tables have been generated. So you can see STEM education, 12 of them. ICT education, 8. These are the ends, or the number of students in each of these groups, humanities and all of that. So the means are here, 2.4. You can see the means are fairly close. The star division, this is quite, this is the one that's going to interest us, because this one, this one where we derive the variance that we're analyzing. You can see, you know, fairly close, 0 0.7, very close. So this is the test of homogeneity of variance. You know, I told you that if you don't pass this test or the other or the, or the other one, then this is not valid. But you can see the Levin statistic is not significant. And as we mentioned in lesson four, this is very good. It's very good because it's telling us that the there's no significant difference among these variants. This is a side vision, but you can do, do, uh, is the, uh, get variances from this. So no, no significant difference. So the homogeneity of variance is assured. And then we'll go to the ANOVA table. This is an ANOVA table. Uh, you can see the mean squares, and you can see the F. The F is giving us a significant level that is greater than 0 0.05. You know, this is 0 0.1. You know, 0 0.1, almost like 0 0.16 is greater than 0 0.05. You know, 0 0.05 is 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.1. You can see. Lot, lot of difference. So, I uh, mentioned to you that we're going to look at the Welsh and Brown Forsyth test. Just in an event that you have this test of homogeneity of variance, that's Levin's test, coming out to be significant, meaning that you have, you don't have homogeneous variance. And to assault to injury, you have differences, a lot of different, okay, not much, 8 to 12 to 11 differences in the ends. Then you have to now use this test. The Welsh test will give us something that's not significant. Also, the Brown Forsyth test. Both of them are doing largely the same thing. Many people will prefer the Welsh test because it is very conservative. It is it, one that uh, is more dependable in terms of conservation. Uh, it being conservative, excuse me, and this one, Brown Forsyth. But we don't need to bother about this because this one is already not significant. So these are F test, which tells us that there's no signal difference among this, this among all of them, because this one is greater than 0.05. Yeah, so we've done our analysis. Action time is over. Well, not completely. <laughs> How far have we gone on this journey? Yes, the five steps. We have done step one, research question. We have done step two, hypothesis. We have done step three. We conducted the one way and over. So. Two more steps. We present our another table and state our decision. So how do we proceed with that? Now, I, I did say that we're okay with the test because the Levin statistic is not significant. So this makes it to be very good. So these are the two tables that we had. We had the table of descriptives. When we had the uh, N, mean, standard division, standard error, all of this. You don't need to bother much about this part of it. Maybe say up to here. These are the descriptive statistics. So how do you present the table? You see, you go to generate like two tables from your ANOVA report. So the first one is the means and star division of perception, the perception, excuse me, scores of the four groups. One, two, three, four. So this means and star division. So this is very important. Usually in a reporting, we I just generated this from the copied it from the SPSS output. You just make it two decimal places. So this is 2.42, 3.00, 2.36, 2.2, and the same thing here. So the second one is your real ANOVA summary table, which will have the between groups variation, within groups variation, and total. Just this table, the one I, I just copied it, as we've noticed, and the 1.158, which is not significant. And the very important uh, 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 rendition here is F 
So you don't have to say, since the F value that you got uh, calculated is uh, less than or more than or whatever you want to say of the table value, then the F value is not significant. So as I said in the t-test, that's old, old story. I don't want to hear people doing about they're talking about it because the computer generates this thing for you. And it's not talking about it about table value because it's already embedded in arriving at this. So the short code, the shorthand, this is the very important one that you go into your report. So we have table one, table two, and this one here. F, you put in bracket the degrees of freedom between and within this three here, 37 here, close, is equal to 1.8, you know, 1.83, I said two decimal places, 1.84, the P greater than 1.5. So the last step is our decision. What's the decision? We start by saying that there will be no statistically significant difference. That's our hypothesis among these people. And we found that indeed there is no statistically significant difference among them. And we can see this shorthand version of the of the findings. So our decision, we didn't we said there will not be statistical significant difference. We didn't find any statistically significant difference. So our decision is not to reject this one. As I mentioned earlier, you do not say we accept it. Although by inference is that you are accepting this. But in the language of hypothesis testing is do not reject. So there are only two things you can say. Reject or do not reject. Here, we're not rejecting the null hypothesis. Now, you keep in mind that if the null hypothesis were really true and you reject it, you committed a type 1 error, uh, but this is not a portion. <laughs> this is not a portion. We have done the correct thing and uh, I think we have rejected, we have not rejected the true null hypothesis. End of story. Let me tell you about ANOVA. So when we were being taught ANOVA in the undergraduate classes, we were, uh, we were you know, we had a professor writing all manner of uh, scary formula on the board. And we're just praying God that, so let this thing be over. So as soon as we finish, you call say, well, thank God, ANOVA is over. So what did we learn? To sum up, in this lesson, we learned the following about what we are ANOVA. It's brief history mathematical model, when we should use it, how we should use it, and how to report our findings. What are we going to learn in the next lesson? You know, in this lesson, we didn't find the ANOVA to be significant. But in an event that you find the ANOVA to be significant, you need to go a step further to find out which group is actually causing this significant difference to happen. And that's why you do a follow-up post-talk test. We could enjoy that lesson as we've done now. So, from me, Peter Okebukola, is bye for now. This is my email ID. If you have any uh, comments or questions, I'd be glad to uh, have them and respond to you. Bye-bye again.